Welcome. Today, we're going to explore grounded theory, a research method that builds theories directly from real-world data. In this video, we'll use real-world educational examples to show you how grounded theory works. Let's get started. Grounded theory is a qualitative research method that allows researchers to build theories from the ground up based on real-world data. Unlike other research methods that start with a hypothesis, grounded theory starts with data collection and lets the theory emerge from that data. As you can see in the pictures of this pyramid, data is in the lower blocks of it. After sufficient data is gathered and analyzed, then we get a theory on top of this pyramid. Grounded theory is not like other type of researches where you might come up with a hypothesis first. For example, students who receive immediate feedback on their assignments will demonstrate higher academic performance than those who receive delayed feedback. Then collect data and then analyze the data to prove or disprove the hypothesis. In fact, data comes first, theory follows. So, when should you use grounded theory? Grounded theory is ideal when you're exploring a topic that hasn't been widely researched. You want to understand complex, real-world behaviors. No existing theory that explains the phenomenon, the existing theory is incomplete. Let's look at a real-world example. Imagine you're a researcher studying how online learning affects student motivation. Since this is a relatively new area with not much existing research, Grounded theory would be a great choice. You start by collecting data, interviewing students, teachers, and observing virtual classrooms. You don't begin with any assumptions. The you start finding emerging patterns, and you let the data tell the story to make a grounded theory. Now, let's break them down, the types of grounded theory with real-world examples. First, we have classical grounded theory, developed by Glazer and Strauss in the 1960s. In this approach, the researcher doesn't start with any preconceived ideas or frameworks. The theory is meant to emerge directly from the data itself, without any bias. For example, if you're researching how students develop study habits, you would gather data from interviews and observations, then allow the patterns in the data to reveal a theory about how students create these habits. You don't begin with assumptions. You let the theory develop naturally. Next, we have Straussian grounded theory, which was developed by Anselm Strauss and later modified by Juliet Corbin. This approach is more structured. Researchers use a set of guidelines to analyze data, including coding and defining categories early in the process. For example, if you're studying the impact of technology in the classroom, you would start by coding the data in a structured way. You might break down the data into categories like engagement, collaboration, and distraction, and use these categories to form your theory about how technology affects learning outcomes. Finally, we have constructivist grounded theory, popularized by Kathy Charmaz. This approach focuses on the idea that both the researcher and the participants co-construct the theory. The researcher's background and perspective play a role in shaping the theory alongside the participants' insights. For instance, if you're researching the experiences of first-year teachers, you wouldn't just observe and analyze the data on your own you'd actively engage with the teachers, interpreting their experiences together to co-create a theory about their challenges and successes in the first year. Classical grounded theory is ideal when you want to explore new or emerging phenomena and don't want your research influenced by existing theories or assumptions. Straussian grounded theory works best when you need a structured, step-by-step -step process to organize large amounts of data. Constructivist grounded theory is perfect when you want to involve your participants in the theory building process and focus on subjective experiences. That is all for today's video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you understand the different types of grounded theory, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more research insights. See you next time.